So let's turn, I think, to one of the things I think that really has been enormously successful, one of the big success stories in the treatment of breast cancer in the last 15 years, uh, actually almost 20 years, coming really out of your institution, as you know, um, which is really the treatment of HER2 positive, um, both early stage and metastatic breast cancer. So let's really talk about HER2 positive uh, metastatic disease first. And so we'll start with Dia. I mean, in your practice, someone comes in uh, first line, uh, HER2 positive disease with a substantial amount of, of uh, systemic burden. So you're definitely going to treat her. She's, or she's sure. ER negative or something. So you're definitely going to treat her with systemic uh, therapy. So what would you do? Well, I think, uh, you know, what we've been really excited about now, what we, we started to use quite a bit, um, is the... Uh, the uh, Trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and, and docetaxel with, with great success. Good. Yeah, and that's actually we've uh, uh, it kind of uh, at Manhattan, Manhattan Cancer Specialists, we really uh, have found that it's uh, been a very tolerable, very easy to give regimen, and uh, patients have done very well. So we're so do you ever substitute paclitaxel? That's done in the community a lot. I mean, I think that, and uh, not even in the academic setting as well. So we, do you use do paclitaxel also? Uh, we don't. One, because we're a community oncologist and we uh, uh, we uh, we try to stay on label. Uh -huh. And and so so since the, uh, the the trials were done with, with docetaxel, we, we do use docetaxel. And we found it pretty well tolerated, less neurotoxicity. And uh, it would have been before pertuzumab, we would have used uh, transfusumab plus docetaxel uh, initially anyway, and that's really what we were doing. So, so we, do, we, do, we don't substitute. So a lot of large community practices follow practice guidelines now, not so much NCCN, but actually guidelines like either WellPoint or V-Oncology mm -hmm. or, or Cardinal Health or something like that. Do you guys follow those guidelines? Oh, we have to. We, we look at all the guidelines, we, right. and we absolutely do, do follow uh, like you said, the uh, uh, Cardinal Health or WellPoint or and NCCN, of course, and NASCO guidelines, and, and we have to. We we really do as as community oncologists. So you don't, but you don't actually have a like Via, for example, tells you to use one specific regimen for each stage of disease. You don't have a, a no, guideline no, program. No, 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 we don't, we don't. Okay. So anyway, so academic guys, and you know, I'm thinking, what do you guys think? What do you usually use first I, line? Exactly the same. Trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and. Uh, and taxane because I think the you can't argue with the response rate or with the uh, progression-free survival of 18 months. I mean, I think that's just incredibly impressive, and, and so you would want to give your patient that, that opportunity. I'm interested, though, because I treat or I see a lot of patients who are treated in the community. They come to our center for an opinion, but they receive their care closer to home. And um, I've seen a lot of... Um, sort of questions about how, how long do we continue the chemo? Um, and what do you do, can you add in hormonal therapy if it's ER positive and HER2 positive when you stop the chemotherapy? And how safe it is, is it to give the dual HER2 targeted therapy for years? Because some of these patients will have four years of not having any progression. And so a lot of questions do come up. And just to address that, I mean, the Cleopatra study did six cycles and then allowed patients to stop the chemotherapy. And that's what I do routinely in my practice. And I do incorporate uh, endocrine therapy in patients who co-express the hormone receptors, even though Cleopatra did not do that. Um, but I think it makes biological sense. And, and so I'd be interested if, if you do the same thing with ER positive, HER2 positive. Yeah, I do. And I, in the first line metastatic setting, um, tend to use do docetaxel, although I have to say I am not a big docetaxel user. It's really increased outside of TC, you know, the docetaxel cyclophosphamide regimen in the early stage setting. I've used more because it's really a pain to give weekly paclitaxel with pertuzumab because pertuzumab is only given every three weeks. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to give the paclitaxel two out of every three weeks, and then you're making two steps away from where our valid data is. So occasionally I'll give paclitaxel. If somebody got, for example, a patient I just recommended to it who relapsed on TC for a 0.6 centimeter ER positive breast cancer with metastatic disease. 0.6 centimeter Yes, tumor? and has I'm like... So sure it was the same cancer? Well, it, it looks like the same cancer, except for the HER2 is positive based on the current ASCO cap guidelines. So we're going to try HER2. Well, let's we'll talk about therapy. that in a minute. But, yeah, but uh, the first, the original cancer was read as negative far at another center. So, but, uh, you know, I, in that case, I said, okay, let's give you paclitaxel because, you know, you had docetaxel before she had some fluid retention, et cetera. But otherwise, I do the same thing. And I do add hormone therapy. I think that we have lots of data to support that approach. 
And I actually have had some questions come in from docs outside and patients about whether or not really the two therapies should be given together. And then I had a curious thing happen, which I still have to deal with, which is that a patient who presented with HER2 positive, uh, ER positive breast cancer, had a bone lesion, FTG avid bone lesion. We tried to biopsy, couldn't get into it. So I treated her, and pertuzumab was approved, so we added it halfway through. And now she's on hormone therapy and pertuzumab and trastuzumab. She's been on for two years. Scans show sclerosis now, no FTG avidity. So this was a, a metastatic lesion. The insurance company has now said we are not following guidelines and they've withdrawn approval of pertuzumab because she's NED, mm -hmm. which I think is a question that Sarah answered really nicely, is that the Cleopatra trial continued both antibodies until progression, Correct. and that's where we're seeing this survival benefit. Right. So, And adding in the hormone therapy is a great thing. We all have these patients who've been on that regimen for 10 years instead of dying of their cancer. It seems right. like a better option.